Hello all, Cardinal Carl here. This time I'm here to talk to you about your timesheet, how to get to it, and then explain some of the different sections and fields in hopes of making your time entry easier. Let's get started. We will start here at the Cardinal homepage. From here, simply click the time tile. And boom, your timesheet page displays. But one quick note, if you have the fortune of having more than one job with the Commonwealth, there is one other page that you will see before you get to your timesheet. On that page, simply select the job that you need to enter time for, because each job has its own timesheet. Now, let's dive right into the layout of your timesheet. At the very top of the page is what we refer to as the header section. This section has some overview information about you, your position, and your time report or type. The next section I want to talk about is the Select Another Timesheet section. Your timesheet page will always open to the current reporting period, but if you need to navigate to a different date or reporting period, use the fields or links in this section to do so. Very important tip here though, if you change the view by or date fields in this section, you must then click the refresh timesheet icon for the page to refresh and display the desired timesheet. Don't get caught staring at your screen waiting for the timesheet dates to change. If you don't click the icon, I promise it won't change. Now we get to the meat and potatoes, the timesheet grid. Most of these fields are pretty self-explanatory, but there are a few things I want to point out. Obviously, the date fields are where you enter your hours. And then you classify those hours by selecting the appropriate time reporting code, regular hours, overtime, etc. And you will learn more about this in the next module of the training. The task group and business unit fields will auto-populate for you based on your agency. The shift field will only display for employees eligible for shift differential, and they use it to identify the shift for the hours being reported. If that sounds completely foreign to you, you probably don't use shift differential, and you won't see this field on your timesheet, just like you don't see it here. You should check with your supervisor about if and how you would use the telework and agency value fields. Leslie is going to talk to you about the chart fields links in the next module, so I won't steal her thunder and go into that here. And finally, the add a new row and remove a row icons. They do exactly what they sound like. There are times when you need to enter hours on multiple rows, such as reporting hours against differing time reporting codes, different shifts, and maybe even different chart fields. Use these icons to add and remove rows as needed. Next, we have the save for later and submit buttons. Sound simple enough? And they are. But Leslie has a few very important tidbits about these buttons that she will share in the next module. And last, but certainly not least, there are various tabs at the bottom of the timesheet. Different employees will have different tabs on their timesheet based on their eligibility and agency configurations. Each tab serves a specific purpose in regards to viewing information, and for that reason, I am not going into detail about them now. They will make more sense to you when you get to the portions of the training related to each of them. And that's it! That's your timesheet in a nutshell! Don't worry, it will all make more sense as you continue on with your training. I will see you again soon, and thanks for watching old Cardinal Carl!